Thanks very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as a co-founder of Greenpeace, with 40 years of experience in the environmental movement, I now believe we made a serious mistake in the early years, the 70s and 80s, by adopting a position against nuclear energy. I believe that in our fear of nuclear war and nuclear weapons, emotions clouded our ability to discern the beneficial versus the destructive uses of this technology. We would never think of nuclear medicine as being evil, and nuclear energy should be regarded in the same way. It is a beneficial use of a technology which can address many issues of human health and the environment. Nuclear energy is one of the safest energy technologies we have ever invented. There has never been an accident at a nuclear reactor in the West that has even injured anyone. No nuclear worker has ever died of a radiation-related accident in the history of, of the Western nuclear industry. There was no injury at Three Mile Island, even though it was the worst nuclear accident that has ever occurred in the West, because the containment structure designed by engineers to keep the radiation in worked. Unfortunately, that was, this was not the case in Chernobyl, the only nuclear reactor accident that has caused harm to the public. The Soviet Union took a shortcut during the Cold War behind the Iron Curtain when they were not under the scrutiny of Western scientists or engineers and built nuclear reactors with no containment structure. That is the primary reason why it spread radiation around the, the, the area. Nuclear energy is one of the cleanest energy technologies we have ever invented. Nuclear plants do not emit air pollution or greenhouse gas, and even in the full life cycle of nuclear energy, it produces only about 2% of the carbon dioxide of burning coal for electricity. Today, nuclear energy provides 20% of America's electricity, and for those who are questioning its potential role in addressing climate change, it already produces over 70% of the clean electricity in the country. Seems to me that that is a fairly significant contribution. Because if that electricity was produced by coal, if we didn't have any nuclear plants, it would be the equivalent of putting 100 million new cars on the road, nearly doubling the number of automobiles, the emissions of CO2 in the country. 22% of the clean energy is from hydroelectric. Less than 5% of the clean energy in the United States is coming from wind, solar, and geothermal combined. So it's very clear that nuclear is making a large contribution, the largest in fact. Nuclear used fuel, unfortunately labeled nuclear waste in many quarters, is actually 95% reusable energy. We would never use 5% of a barrel of oil and throw the rest away. Recycling, which I think is important for environmentalists to support as we recycle paper and glass, we should be recycling our used nuclear fuel like they do in France every day 22 of their 59 nuclear reactors are operating on recycled nuclear fuel, and Japan has just built a $30 billion nuclear fuel fabrication and recycling plant at Rokosho, north of Tokyo, to do the same thing, even safer, in that the Japanese technology does not have any plutonium emerging as a pure product, and thereby greatly reduces the chance of proliferation. Nuclear energy in the United States is the only energy technology because hydroelectric is already built to capacity so nuclear is really the only energy technology that can effectively replace fossil fuels for large-scale continuous clean safe and reliable and cost-effective electricity production it is simply not possible to base our electricity supply on technologies like wind and solar that are inherently intermittent. We cannot run our hospitals, factories, schools, businesses, and homes on technologies that simply disappear for three or four days at a time. We should look to countries like France, Sweden, and Switzerland, all of which I have visited and spoken with people in the energy industry. They generally tend to have a mixture of hydroelectric and nuclear with very little fossil fuel. Sweden, 50% hydroelectric, 50% nuclear. Switzerland, 40% nuclear, 55% hydroelectric. France, 80% nuclear, 10% hydroelectric. Those three countries are the three lowest emitters of CO2 per capita in Europe. Germany, on the other hand, which for some strange reason people point to as a shining example of green enlightenment, 
has the highest level of CO2 emissions in Western Europe because it has 70% fossil fuel electricity and has just announced that it's going to build another six coal-fired power plants because the billions, tens of billions, in public monies that have been poured into wind and solar simply have not borne fruit. Less than 1% of Germany's electricity is from solar energy, and they're paying five times as much per kilowatt hour for it as for conventional energy sources. I, I ask everybody to compare Germany with France, Switzerland, and Sweden, which all have less than one-third of the per capita CO2 emissions of the United States. The United States with 70% fossil fuel electricity, 20% nuclear, 6% hydroelectric, and a small amount of wind and solar has not got the right electricity mix. Instead of having 50% coal and 20% nuclear, we should have 50% nuclear and 20% coal. And that should be the ambition of the new administration, to start us on a path towards clean energy in the United States. Because one thing I know for certain, it makes no sense to charge a plug-in hybrid vehicle on a coal-fired power plant. And that is what we are facing in many of the states in this country where coal is the predominant electricity source. From an environmental point of view, it will simply not make any sense. It will cause more pollution from the coal-fired plant than you would get from a reasonably economic automobile with an internal combustion engine with a catalytic converter on it. So we've got to get serious about this because electricity is at the base of virtually all of our technologies, all of our lives, everything we do requires electricity. And we're not going to need less of it in the future. We're going to need more of it to charge our plug-in hybrid vehicles and get oil out of cars and to run our ground source heat pumps in our buildings in order to get fossil fuels out of our infrastructure. These three things, cleaning up the electricity supply, moving to battery-driven vehicles for commuting, and putting ground source heat pumps in buildings, will drastically reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, clean up the air, prevent the deaths of tens of thousands of people every year prematurely from breathing fossil fuel smoke. No other technology that we do causes more harm to human health than the burning of fossil fuels causing the air we breathe to be basically toxic. And many parts of the United States are in excess of the limit from the EPA. The way to address that is to build more nuclear plants. Yes, build, build windmills as well. But just remember, every time you build a wind farm, you have to build a gas plant to back it up for the two-thirds of the time when the wind isn't blowing. Wind virtually automatically means building new fossil fuel facilities, whereas nuclear plants do not because they run continuously and reliably. There is simply very clear arithmetic in this. And solar is even worse. Not only does it cost five or 10 times as much as conventional electricity, but it only works 20% of the time at best. We cannot have our, our whole society based on these technologies which don't work most of the time. Because all of them need to be, the intermittent technologies need to be backed up with reliable technologies like hydroelectric and nuclear. When it comes right down to it, the only three base load technologies available to us are fossil fuels, nuclear, and hydroelectric. As I stated earlier, hydroelectric is built out to capacity. It is limited by geography and rainfall, whereas nuclear is not. So clearly moving forward, the choice is between fossil fuels and nuclear. And the problem with wind and solar is not just that they are intermittent, is that you have to back them up with something like natural gas. You can't back wind up with coal properly or with nuclear because they don't turn on and off quickly. And if you go to the German government website showing the production of wind energy in Germany, one day you've got 18,000 megawatts, the next day you've got nothing. We can't run a country like that. You have to fill in that gap somehow. How are they filling it in in Germany? With gas and coal. And we don't need that future here in the United States. So with that, I'll just conclude by repeating once again, nuclear energy is the only energy technology that can effectively replace fossil fuels and provide safe, reliable, cost-effective electricity for the growth of the United States. Thank you very much.